Morning, fam. Well, hmm. I'll give you all a look, see. It's nothing much today. Oh, let me turn my thing a little bit. And there's some, uh, there's a bunch of big ships over there. And I saw a bunch of them lined up in front of the building here when we was uh, out for lunch. We went to Terminal 21, which is cheap, cheap, but really good. And let's see, there's one guy right here, but all the boats is gone. It's kind of weird. And you kind of see some white caps there. And I don't know if that means any weather's coming. We saw a report yesterday that uh, north of here is getting tons and tons of water, but all the reservoirs here and Patia are not in good shape. There's one big one right there. Got a bunch of stuff on. I just got me a new a new pole. Here's my old pole, the thing that drives me nuts. That one. So I got me a new stick. It's adjustable. We'll see how it works and stuff. Morning Barbara, Jennifer. Let's see. Uh, see, the thing is, see, like, you can see the sun is out right here, and it's going on here, and, like, in 10 minutes, that's the, one of the nice things about Thailand is it might just turn absolutely beautiful here in a few minutes. I saw the elephants out today, or a bunch of, I don't know if it's a holiday this week or what, but it was pretty busy. What is that guy doing? That's kind of, is that a jet ski or no? That's a boat. Looks like <clears throat> even a little bit like when we've gone to Kolarn, which is around here and up that way. It's just an island, but uh, if the wind's blowing at all, it'll it'll <laughs> it'll push you around in ways you don't like. But uh, yeah, see like. See, you can see the sun coming out and the light's changing just in the minute. But I said that, and it's kind of lighting up the sanctuary, making it look beautiful. Ooh. I am flat out tired today. I went out to the uh, glorious house of Gaines. Okay, hold on. I got. I'm, let me adjust this. Okay, I think I'm going to like this a lot better. And, um, well, I mean, I have a duty to troll my friends, and that's what I do. And um, I'm looking at the guy that was out there coming, and I didn't, I don't see what, that's a, such a small boat. I don't know. Um, I sat up last night, I, I wrote a quick post when I was falling asleep. I have tinnitus real bad, which is ringing of your ears. I've, I ha I had that, I've had it forever. And when I had brain surgery afterwards, uh, when I woke up from brain surgery, it was gone. It was I was, I couldn't believe it. I was so happy. I, I, I oh, to be free of it. And I was free of it for like about six months. And then uh, I had to start doing human growth hormone injections because my pituitary gland wasn't working properly. And I had the skeleton uh, of an 80 year old woman so I need, uh, my endocrinologist gave me some uh, human growth hormone uh, to, after I got the tumor out, to try to get my hormones kick-started and working because it was on my pituitary gland. My pituitary gland wasn't generating uh, any hormones. 
and that guy is real close to shore. But uh, anyway, so uh, I got some human growth hormone and the mint, and it was really strange because I don't see how it could have gotten into my system as fast as it did. But it's, a, it's an injection thing, like an injection pen. And I absolutely love human growth hormone. It was, I felt wonderful uh, when I started taking it. But as soon as I hit that injection in like two minutes, my tinnitus came back and it was, it was and it's never gone away. So I have to have the t television on, have like white noise in the back or I can't sleep. And I make, <clears throat> I don't make this other substance, this hormone called substance P, which makes it hard for me to sleep. So I always have to have sleep medicine, that kind of stuff. And um, last night I was, my program, I have a, uh, this app, I've told you all about it before. I absolutely love it. But sometimes it has to be updated. And so last night I was waiting for the update because it was freezing just for, I mean, it's nothing. Don't think it's anything. And um, so I, MSNBC was freezing up badly so I switched over to CNN for like the first time in I don't know how long uh, over a year since Chris licked I'm guessing and there was Dana Bash talking to Nancy Mace and I was trying to go to sleep I'd already taken my sleep medicine and I was just like oh god please please don't say anything and of course she said something and I got thinking about that and I might write about it here in a little bit when I go back in I'm just ooh, I, I went hard at the gym today and um, one of the things that Nancy Mace talked about was uh, being raped when she was 15 and uh, she dropped out of school and somehow got admitted to the Citadel, which is a uh, military school in South Carolina. And she was the first woman to graduate from it. Uh, they didn't want women folk in there. And I got thinking, and the more I thought about Nancy Mace, the, the more angry I got because I thought, what a broken woman she must be, uh, that she's in a party, or the Republican Party, and she doesn't even have the basic amount of intelligence and the basic amount of probity to fully understand that the person that raped her, well, take a wild guess what party they're in. Um, I mean, I am sure there are men who might vote Democrat that are rapists too, but in my life experience, uh, the men that uh, abuse women uh, tend to be Republican, uh, especially that kind of abuse. And how has she got, been so aloof, so oblivious, so obsequious? as to not come to that realization that uh, her rapist was um, a member of her own party, I'm guessing. I'm more than guessing. And um, I don't understand it. I don't understand why somebody would do that because I'm an atheist. And there we have the problem. The problem is, is that she is a religious uh, nutter, and uh, there's something that builds up in people that uh, are afflicted with cognitive dissonance when they're very young. And I was lucky. I was lucky because one time my dad said to me. I don't want a psychological eye turned to me. And immediately being the uh, 
his son and the son of my mother, I had to start reading endless psychology books. And when you start reading psychology, one of the things that it encourages you to do is to dissect your personality. And, um, and it sounds like an abstract thought. It, well, dissect your personality. Uh, it's tough. It's tough work. And uh, I can tell you that when I did this stuff, I was probably about uh, 23, 24, somewhere around there. And um, when you start dissecting your personality, it's really hard work uh, because one of the first things that you learn is is that the worst kind of liar uh, that exists are the people that lie to themselves. And they try to talk grades about it. They, they try to grade the ability to tell the truth on certain ways about that and if you want to climb Maslow's scale of self-actualization you have to be honest with yourself and the problem is is that people don't want to do this work because it's hard work it's not easy work at all because you have to look at yourself and look at your flaws and uh, come through on the other side and try to be a better human being and that's tough work. It's not something. It's not the kind of work that is taught in American uh, schools, which I think it should be. Uh, that and <clears throat> memory exercises are two of the things that I would implement if I was benevolent dictator in the United States. And um, I see Republicans riddled with all variants of uh, mental um, problems. And Nancy Mace is one of them. And the rest of them are this way too. James Comer, for instance, in Kentucky, he's the jackass that's uh, in charge of something. He's a committee chair of one of the dipshit things that uh, Kevin McCarthy, but uh, I'll just use him as an example because I'm talking about Nancy Mace, but uh, James Comer apparently had a little uh, uh, tryst with the woman who, and the woman said it was non-consensual, okay? Now, I don't mean to be belittling this kind of shit because it pisses me off. I, I have seen the very real effects of what uh, rape does to a woman uh, my evil sister was raped, and uh, it turned her into a monster, turned her into a sociopath, and um, and I'll, and one of the things that I had to deal with when I was dissecting my personality is one of the things that I did that I'm not proud of. I have since fixed this issue, but I had. Uh, roughhoused with my sister before and when she said she was raped I was like and who sh who had raped her well I knew the guy I knew him uh, and I would bet any amount of money today that he is a Republican and uh, but the thing that the thing that fucked my sister up was that I, at my stage in life then, I could not comprehend how a woman as strong as uh, she is could be raped. I didn't understand that, so I didn't believe her. <clears throat> and a couple of years later, I don't know, it was several, probably five years later. Um, I was going up to uh, uh, a grocery store with my buddy, Eric. <clears throat> and Eric was my sister's girlfriend. I knew him from uh, this restaurant that we worked at. And uh, we went up to this IGA and guess who we saw? 
And <clears throat> it didn't register to Eric because Eric hadn't seen him. But as soon as I saw him, I just kind of locked eyes on his figure. I was like, is that him? Is that Derek? Is that Derek? Derek was his name. And uh, I, I kept looking at him. And as I got closer to him, he, he turned and saw me. And as soon as he saw me, he started to run. And, and it fucked me up. I'm still fucked up about it because I knew at that moment that he, well, why was he running? <clears throat> Cause he was guilty as fuck. And when he turned to run and it rained outside and he had lost his footing in this puddle of, that was in the parking lot and he fell down and me and Eric were on top of him just and uh, Eric knew who he was by the time we got there. And I don't, I don't, uh, I don't feel regret. I don't feel any regret um, for what Eric and I did to him. Uh, we, he understood violence. He had committed an act of violence. And it had done bad things to my sister, really fucked her up. And so uh, we spoke in the language that he understood. And um, I can't tell you, I can't impart onto you uh, how how much it changed my sister. It changed her from what I thought was a reasonably good and intelligent young woman into uh, a sociopath. She was so bitter, so angry, that she just, uh, that kind of uh, thinking got, got in her mind. And uh, she's a big Christian now and uh, and she's entirely evil because she's not the kind of person that would uh, want to do the kind of work of dissecting your personality. It's hard work. It's it's some of the most it's some of the hardest work. And once you do it, when you recognize some of your own flaws, and you try to say, okay, for me, um, one of the big flaws that I am, I was a pompously, if you think I'm arrogant now, when I was a kid, I was much worse. Uh, and the reason why, and it, it teaches you these things when you're dissecting your personality. Well, the reason why that I was so pompously arrogant was, was because I was incredibly insecure because in eighth grade, I had a teacher who said that uh, who told my father that she thought I was retarded. And, um, and I can't tell you what, <laughs> this fucked my dad up, too. My dad was fucked up for a while, too. Like, how the hell can he be retarded? He beats everybody in chess. And I was just like, holy shit, why does this somebody think I'm retarded? I hate saying that word, too. Trust me. I'm saying this because at the time when I was going through this, that was the word that applied. And uh, so to make up for that, to uh, make up for my, for what that teacher said to me, I had to be, I had to read as many books as I could. I had to uh, chase intelligence and knowledge and everything that I could. So in a way, you could say that that was uh, a good effect from that teacher. It was a good effect of having a moron teacher because I did get to go to private school after that because uh, subsequent events happened that showed that I wasn't what she thought I was. But when you go through this, this process, it's just like, you have to come to terms with some of the things that you might have done in your past that you're not proud of, and you're supposed to go tell those people, uh, 
that you acknowledge that you had done something uh, wrong to them and that you're sorry for it. That's hard shit too, but you got to do it. And it teaches you things. It teaches you to become a more, um, more of a humanist, I guess. And uh, I thought about that. I was thinking about that because my mind never shuts up. And I was waiting for this update to come on my, my thing so I could just have the white noise of the TV, the TV and go to sleep. And the more I thought about Nancy Mace, the, the angrier I got. I kept getting angrier and angrier. And I was trying to sleep, and I didn't want to do that. And so that's why I got up and I wrote that piece about Nancy Mace this morning. And there's something that I wish that we could teach in America all about this. Because if you, if you look at the United States, see, I'm here now. I'm in Thailand, away from the cesspool of sickness that has infiltrated the minds of, uh, well, Fox News viewers. I'll target them. But uh, propaganda has, uh, uh, is very effective. It works. Uh, it works to a level that's kind of frightening. Because if you talk to one of the Fox viewers, one of the, first, one of the things that they love to say, oh, well... <laughs> You're one of those libtards that went to college and got indoctrinated by your professors. That's your problem. And I can't tell you how many times, it, if you really want to grind my gears and get me to get bust out the fucking horns, is uh, <clears throat> tell me something like, well, the people that need to read this won't. Uh, and... Uh, I have other little things like that to do that, but one of the things that makes me feel that gets me really angry is, well, uh, he ain't got no common sense. He's got all that book learning, but it ain't got no common sense. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that in my life. And how do you break through? How do you get through to people? And one of the things that Fox people will say was, well, you're the brainwashed. You're brainwashed. Well, if you want to brainwash people, the first thing you want to do is convince them that everybody else is brainwashed. And that's really the evil nature of everything that Rupert Murdoch has ever accomplished in his life. His only, uh, accompl his only accomplishment, besides accruing an, an obscene amount of wealth, is making half the country sick with the sophistry and the cognitive dissonance that comes from the plethora of dipshits. And I mean that sincerely. There isn't anybody on Fox who I would consider even a, a sentient human being because they don't have any self-awareness. Uh, they think it's okay to lie. And why do they think it's okay to lie? Well, they think it's okay to lie because, you know, if they're lying a little bit, they're doing it for the cause, and doing it for the cause is a good good enough reason for it. And, of course, these fucking idiots, Steve Ducey, Brian Kilmeade, the, the entire lineup, uh, there was something broken in their brain very early in life. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it was, but there came a point where they had a switch in their brain. They said, well, fuck all that caring about people, and trying to make life better for human beings at all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to accrue as much money as I can, and then when I go up to heaven at the pearly gates, something's going to happen there, and uh, we're going to get to watch the Battle of Armageddon happen down here on Earth, and nothing's going to happen to us. And that's really, you know, intellectually my problem with religious people. Uh, because they never leave, uh, they 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 wear their they wear their religious beliefs like a badge of honor instead of a badge of shame, which to me that's what it is. And um, 
we can see the manifestations of these things right now. The Pope is in Mongolia right now. And though I despise the Catholic Church endlessly, they're an absolute bad thing entirely. They're an evil organization. Uh, the Pope, Pope is in Mongolia talking about uh, things that are pretty, that I like, and that uh, people should be respected and not, not be uh, saddled. <laughs> and, and, and the irony of it is just completely lost, uh, that people shouldn't be forced, forced into a belief system which I thought was endlessly amusing for a pope to say anything like that. Because everybody that I've ever met, and th this sounds like, well, this sounds like fancy college words, cognitive dissonance. This is a big fancy college word. They ain't got no, they don't mean nothing to us. It means everything. It means everything. Cognitive dissonance means everything because if you're afflicted with cognitive dissonance and you haven't done the work to free yourself from its disgusting chains, then you're going to be broken as a human being. You're going to be broken like Nancy Mace is in a party full of fucking scumbags and not having the self-awareness. She said one of the, the things that I couldn't sleep about is well, we can't be assholes to women. And I'm just like, Jesus fucking Christ, lady. I don't know how old she is, 40, I'm guessing, somewhere around there. And the cognitive dissonance that she has to say, Republicans, well, we can't be assholes to women. When Republicans have all, in, in her own state, she knows about the Dobbs decision, okay? She knows about the Dobbs decision. She knows about being raped. Does she think she should have been forced to give uh, birth to a rape baby? Well, we're not going to hear any answers from her, Nancy about that. But if, you, if you're in North Carolina and you are a woman who has been raped, uh, you can guarantee that you're going to have that rape baby because they've outlawed abortion. I think, uh, I forgot how many weeks, I think it's 12, but it might have been six weeks. I'm not sure somebody can correct me. <clears throat> but South Carolina passed an absolute draconian uh, abortion bill because Republicans still have the cognitive dissonance that tells them that the reason why women have abortion is because, you know, uh, they don't want to take birth control. They're whores. I can't tell you how many times I've heard something like that from a clergyman that women who are promiscuous are whores. And that's one of the worst things that I hate about the United States because the United States is a toxic male patriarchal society. And we can't even begin to have discussions about things like this because people hear words like toxic male patriarchal society and cognitive dissonance and they're like, them some big words. I ain't got no, I don't think, what's all them words for? I just need the Bible. That's all I need. And the harm that those things do, the toxic male patriarchal society that nurtures and fosters um, rule by men, when men are just absolutely fucking proven, terrible at governing, uh, why do we allow this to happen? Why do, we, why do we continue to allow Republicans to ply their disgusting trade, which is to fool, lie, and dupe uh, people afflicted with a, a plethora of mental infirmities to get them to vote against their own interest? And the principal reason for this is religion. The reason why people will vote against their own religion because they think they're they're standing up for God. And when they get up to the pearly gates, they're going to get their first class ticket stamped. They're going to get to go in. <clears throat> and that's the problem. <clears throat> and hopefully that explains some of this 
to you Christians. Because I know you think, oh, well, I'm one of the good ones, Thomas. No, you're not. You're not. There's no such thing. Uh, I watched a thing. Some, some guy heard me talking about uh, Mormons. And um, I, I, I admit I am uh, rather ignorant of the Mormon faith, but I know some about it. I got a very uh, rich education watching a video today. So uh, Mormons believe there's trillions of planets and uh, trillions of planets uh, have gods on them. And it, you and there's a difference between a Mormon church and a Mormon temple. A temple is something that is used to make sure that one person, like a bishop, Mitt Romney, is going to be a god on Colo. And when you get when you get to the god status, you get to have as many women as you like. Okay, all the women you want. And because there was a bunch of people that now you don't you probably don't know this but there was jesus and Nazareth, and there was lucifer okay and lucifer was going to come to the to the new planet earth and populate it and doing that and he was like and jesus was like no i think we should what we should do is we should let people be humans and not gods and something something happened according to uh joseph smith and then what happened was is that all the people that went and followed Lucifer are black. And um, we already seen what uh, the horrors of religion have already done to black people. I'm always amazed when I meet black Christians because I'm like, uh, uh, do you know you you know that what the Christians did, don't you? And the Mormons are worse. And that's another piece of cognitive dissonance. And um, the reason why that's important, you know, is what I talked about. You know, they're draining the Great Salt Lake, and the salinity of it's almost reaching uh, a point of no return, where all the brine shrimp in the Great Salt Lake are going to die because Mormons are populating and building new subdivisions north of the Salt Lake so that they're taking more water off of the river that used to flow into the Great Salt Lake. So religion is doing that. Uh, it, that's going to be a very real consequence for a lot of people. And part of the other problem that we don't talk about much. Actually, I saw this other thing. I, I might bring it up, but in a minute about uh, pig farms. But one of the problems that is happening in Utah is uh, that people are getting a lot sicker. Why? Well, because the Salt Lake is withdrawing, it's getting smaller, and all the water that used to keep some of the contaminants in is uh, aerosoling some of the contents of the Salt Lake. And this is making people sick. And plus, there's other things in the Great Salt Lake that uh, uh, that are, some are natural, some are from other things. But there's things like arsenic and other poisons that aren't working. And incidentally, I'll, I, I'm going to mention this because since I'm bringing that up, one of the things I saw was on uh, Sam Cedar's show. Emma Viglin was doing it. I should post the video. I might put stick it in the comments if I remember to. But uh, one of the things that's going on in South Carolina, and this just happened, is that South Carolina has a bunch of hog farms. Well, uh, the way that these uh, agribusiness set up hog farms is, is they build these big sheds with, and they put about 15,000 pigs in each shed. And what they do is, is they build a grate above them, uh, a steel grate. So when they um, piss and shit, it falls below and it, then they shoot some water through it 
and then they wash the water out into these gigantic holding tanks. And they produce so much urine, uh, what they do is, is they have a tower up above that aerosols the urine and puts it in the air. So they did an environmental impact study around uh, these hog farms and the people are getting sicker. They're, they've got terrible, terrible asthma. And um, so the hurricane just came through and guess what the hurricane did? 15,000 hogs, usually these hog farms are about 75,000 hogs. A hog will produce three times more waste than a human being, okay? So um, what happened was, is Idalia had just came through, flooded all of the uh, sewage tanks for these things and floated all the shit and piss out of these things into all the water aquifers. And um, the reason why they're allowed to do this is because Republicans, Republican, we got to get government off the back of business is what we got to do. And that's another layer of cognitive dissonance that Republicans think, well, you know, uh, you got to have, you got to get go, big government off the back of business so businesses can turn a profit. And Republicans are always going to do this. They're always going to uh, deny that climate change is real, and they're always going to side uh, with business over human beings forever. And um, that's another very real thing that we need to deal with with a, uh, in our society, but we can't. And it's not gonna happen in my lifetime, I'm sad to say. I don't think there's gonna be some great awakening where we're gonna be able to fix the, the damage that Fox News is doing to the minds of its viewers. It's impossible. I, I don't know how we get out of it. Uh, we saw a small result of what Fox did to the nation on January the 6th. How many of those uh, guys that were assaulting the Capitol were Fox viewers? All of them. Every single one of them. And it's kind of sickening now. There's a, there's a, I, I read this thing and I might, I'm, I don't know how to use this yet exactly. But uh, there was a thing on the New York Times yesterday where they released the text messages from Mark Meadows. So Republicans are like, the president are telling Mark Meadows, the president, Trump needs to get out and make a, a statement. He needs to stop the violence. He needs to do this. He needs to do that. And as the day wore on, and they knew that they weren't going to be able to con conceal the fact that these people were Trump supporters, they started saying uh, Marjorie Tater Green. And a bunch of the other of these scumbags started saying, well, these are Antifa. And Black Lives Matter just dressed, dressed as Trump supporters. They know they're lying. They're, they don't feel any consequences from their lying because all of their people that voted for them are re religious fools and liars themselves. And they don't want to deal with the truth. They don't want to confront uh, the fact that uh, those people were Trump supporters because they want they don't want to accept blame. They don't want to accept personal responsibility. They don't want to accept personal responsibility for <clears throat> historically what uh, white people have done to black people. They specifically don't want any kind of racism taught, any kind of uh, history taught uh, about racism and how the United States is a racist nation. And I saw this other dipshit today. Uh, he's a preacher. I should post that article. I should post more, but I'm trying not to flood everybody's feet. But I saw some pastor talking about, well, this is a Christian nation founded on Christian principles and stuff. No, it wasn't. And uh, 
this nation wasn't founded by anybody. It was stolen by people that came from England and other parts of the country, other parts of the world. This was a country before uh, white people showed up. Uh, there was a bunch of uh, Native Americans here. And these guys don't even want to acknowledge uh, what the United States government and the people who were trying to found this great country did uh, to the Native Americans. And that'll be next on the chopping block. And uh, how do we begin to confront that kind of thing? I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. I know it's something that we need to uh, do. And the simple fact of the matter is, is that we need to drop to destroy Fox News. We need to start regulating the amount of propaganda that is put on American airwaves. And we need to have <clears throat> some consequences for the people who foment lies like it was Antifa and Black Lives Matter. He wasn't a Trump supporter. Every single person, 100% of the people who have been sent to prison and convicted in federal court, 100%, every single one of them is a Republican, a Trump supporter. Not one Black Lives Matter, not one single solitary uh, Antifa person was arrested. And... That is another lie that Republicans like to tell to try to conceal the fact that what they're doing is completely evil. Uh, that they did try to overthrow the government. And if we had any merit or if we believed in the rule of law in the United States, the FBI would have already arrested about uh, 50 members of the House of Representatives and about 30 in the Senate for committing sedition against the United States. But we don't have those kind of levers in the United States of power. Why? Well, because there's 50 Republicans in the Senate, or 49 right now. Joe Manchin, I would count as one, and Kirsten Sinema, too, for that matter. Uh, she's a Republican. And um, these are very real things that we need to be able to discuss. Uh, as a society, but we can't have these things. We can't. Ha we can't even have conversations like this where we want to discuss how America is falling behind the rest of the world. China, for instance, is teaching their eighth graders uh, calculus. Okay, we don't do that in the United States. And uh, some things we do better, but we've been inculcated with all of this bullshit propaganda that. Well, you know, American, it, this is American exceptionalism. Uh, that belief is going to get our asses kicked eventually. And Americans sure thought that they were exceptional in Vietnam, didn't they? And we weren't. We weren't exceptional at all. We got our asses kicked because of dumb fuck Republican uh, theocratic fascist, uh, bluntly put. And it's one of the reasons why I'm here instead of there, because I know what happens to guys like me in a theocratic fascist state. And if you think that, uh, oh, well, that might be a little hyperbolic, Thomas. No, it isn't. You're not paying attention. Not like I am, anyway. But anywho, I might have to get another light. But if I put another light out here, it's going to be Bug City. Because this thing, a few days ago, Bug City was ours. So I'll give you all a shot. It kind of got dark on us. There's two fellows close to shore. Come on, man, it's this. Okay, there we go. There's two guys close to shore. I don't know. For Ginger and Karen. Come on, focus. I don't know why it does that. It goes completely potato. Okay. There it works, just stay there. I wish I could stay, keep it focused, but there's, as soon as I do it, like that, it goes potato. Sorry about that, fam. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna go in and sit with my darling. I might write something, I don't know. 
uh, I'm gonna try to get working on my uh, my novel some more tomorrow because I I have uh, not written anything in the last couple of days and I'm, I'm gonna want to finish it by uh, Christmas hopefully I'm, it's just a target. I don't know if I'm actually going to finish it by then, but I'm working on it. You know, it's a new kind of thing for me. I hate that this thing won't focus like that. It makes me angry. But anyway, there's the Pattaya sky. It's kind of beautiful here. And hope you all get out and seize the day in Carpe Diem. I'll see you all tomorrow.